Hello, this is Heather Deacon, Director of Business Affairs and Treasurer for National Capital Presbytery. Welcome to our 2025 budget presentation. Thank you so much for setting aside time to watch. I know that everyone does not share my excitement about budgets and numbers, but I do hope that you'll find our time together useful. I'd like to start by walking uh, through how our budgets are developed. Developing our budgets really start with, I believe, a familiar premise. As Presbyterians, we believe in the connectional nature of the church. We are connected by our polity and obviously by our faith, but I also believe that we are connected by our budgets or rather the monies used to create our budgets here in this presbytery connect us to each other. If we start with the money, we have three main sources, the faithful witness of yesterday's saints, which often takes the form of our endowments. We have funds received from dissolutions and property sales, and we have funds received from our churches typically coming in as unified giving per capita and special offerings. And as the money sort of flows through the budget, you'll see as a presbytery, generally, we support growth opportunities, ministries of our churches, and leadership development. And then when we take a step back, you can begin to see how the money flows through our budgets and each area really is connected to each other. As you prayerfully consider these budgets, I hope that the idea that our budgets connect us as a presbytery to each other, to our churches, to our communities, to our past and to our future, I hope that all stays in the forefront of your mind. Rooted in that connection, you'll see how it begins to play out in the development process. Budget development falls broadly into three main areas, budget guidance memo, committee requests, and funding plans. The process starts um, with budget and finance committee developing the guidance mem memo. Um, in doing this, they evaluate and analyze the economic landscape and our giving trends, and then based on that analysis, they make a recommendation. This year's guidance memo did recommend that committees make reductions where possible. The committees and commissions get that memo, they review their current year budget, and they assess the work that they're being called to do in 2025. And then they determine the resources that are needed to do that work. Those requests come back to budget and finance and they begin comp compiling the budgets. And as a side note, here's my pitch um, for nominating committee. This is a huge place where your voice can be heard. If you wanna see a priority in our budgets that aren't there, you are encouraged to get involved with that committee and then use your voice to make the change. The nominating committee, I know, stands ready to help match your gifts and your passions with the work that needs to be done by our committees and our commissions. Once the requests have been received and input into the budget, Budget and Finance begins creating the funding plan. That plan has two big components. The recommendations on annual draws off of the investments and then the per capita rate. Once the funding plan is input into the budget, the budgets are ready to be reviewed. And that starts with budget and finance, reviewing and voting. From there, leadership council reviews and votes in the budget. And then that brings us to where we are now. It's time for Presbytery to review and vote on the budget. That step will lead us hopefully towards having our finalized budgets. The Presbytery has two budgets. I hope that that's something you're all aware of, but just in case you aren't, um, I want to make sure that you hear that today during this presentation. We have an operating budget and we have a mission budget. Speaking in broad strokes, our operating budget funds National Capital Presbytery staff, Presbytery office space, 
and office expenses. It funds COM, it funds CPM, and then it funds various middle governing body expenses. The mission budget funds our mission staff and it funds CDC and MCC. We're gonna start with our operating budget. And as you can see from this graphic, the operating budget funds a variety of things. I just listed a few of them in broad strokes, but I would also encourage you to look at the 2025 draft budget and then our 2024 impact report, which really does a phenomenal job of outlining what is funded through which budget um, and telling the stories of those, uh, those budgets. For simplicity's sake, I like to say that the operating budget covers all of the things that it takes to actually run the Presbytery and its office in order to meet our responsibility as laid out by our polity. The 2025 operating budget, um, as proposed, is $1,341,773.03, which represents a 6.9% decrease over 2024. I'm going to review a handful of the highlights, but I do encourage you to give it a good read over for yourselves. The biggest driver of cost reductions this year comes from moving our presbytery offices. Our current office lease is up at the end of this year. And so by relocating to a smaller office space, we are budgeting nearly $60,000 in cost reductions for 2025. And then the overall impact is a 38% reduction in our office expenses. You'll also note a slight increase in monies requested by CPM, and this is due to an uptick in the number of people entering the call process, which resulted in an increase of 8.1%. Middle governing body expenses increased by 16%, and this is due mostly to a realignment of costs associated with our annual audit. And then lastly, this summer, General Assembly passed a unified budget ultimately unifying the Office of General Assembly and the Presbyterian Mission Agency. Budget and Finance is currently working to follow suit and unify our operating and mission budgets. For 2025, that means moving the costs of mission staff to the operating budget by way of a mission calibration line item. Within the staffing portions of each budget, you'll see a calibration number that accounts for the mission staff. By moving the costs and monies in this way, we are ensuring that despite appearing in the operating budget, only mission dollars are supporting mission staff. I wanna be very clear, this move does not have an impact on per capita. And then a final note, it isn't listed on the slide, but personnel uh, did include a 3.6 cost of living increase for staff in their budget, and this follows the COM recommendation. When we talk about funding the operating budget, we really have four sources. We have the office fund, the retreat fund, the scholarship fund, and then we have per capita. The office fund was established to offset the costs of operating expenses. The anticipated balance at the end of the year is $561,356. And the recommended draw from that fund is $110,000. And this draw is a, about uh, $90,000 less than last year's. And that is due entirely to the removal of moving expenses and lowering our office rent. The retreat fund supplements our annual continuing education, clergy and church professionals retreat, and the draw is up from five is up five thousand dollars from twenty twenty four. The scholarship fund um, supports seminarians coming out of National Capital Presbytery and is administered by CPM. I do want to point out that these draws are all. Uh, really in alignment with our historical draws with the exception of the office fund, which is significantly lower than our historical draws. And then that leaves us with per capita. And while it is last on the list, 
That is not because it's the least important, but rather it really just is because of how the rate is calculated each year. Essentially, we back into that number. Once we have the expense and then we deduct the investment draws, we are left with the need. And that remaining number, that need, is divided by the membership of National Capital Presbyterian Churches from two years prior. So in this case, the membership numbers from 2023. Calculating per capita last allows us to minimize the financial impact to our churches. On the screen here, you see a graph of our membership data since 2010, and the numbers reflect the trend that we, we know to be true. Our membership is shrinking. Each governing body assessed per capita on membership numbers from two years prior, so 2025 per capita, is assessed on 2023 membership. The 2023 membership number decreased by 1,047 members, and then each of the governing bodies sets a per capita rate to cover their expenses, and the sum of those three amounts is the total per capita amount assessed for each member. On this slide, you're gonna see our per capita recommendation. We have General Assembly coming in at $10.44, which is 64 cent increase over 2024 rates. The Senate rate remained the same. And then NCP's proposed rate is $38.56, an increase of 95 cents over 2024. And these three numbers combined to $50.15 which is a total increase of $1.59. And while it is not always the case, this year's per capita increase is entirely due to membership loss. So as we finish up our 2024 budget time, I want to leave you with a handful of actions. Please, please review the operating budget details, which are included in the budget packet. Come then with any questions to the action item dialogue on Monday, November the 18th, which is the night before our November Presbyterian meeting on the 19th. Um, and then, of course, you can email any questions to the NCP office and we'll be happy to address them. Uh, lastly, on the screen, you see the motion that you will be asked to vote on at the November Presbyterian meeting. Now, as we turn to the mission budget, um, I'll remind you that just like with the operating budget, you see a graphic of some of the fantastic things in the mission budget funds. I again recommend you take a look at the 2025 draft budget in the packet. And again, our 2024 impact report, because it has such great detail about what our budget support. The stories there really paint the picture of um, how the work that's being done by the congregations of National Capital Presbytery. Generally speaking, I think our mission budget does just what it says it does. It funds the mission priorities of not just National Capital Presbytery, but of the churches that make up our presbytery. The 2025 mission budget, as proposed, is $1,074,758.85 which represents a 0.1 increase over 2024. And as we move through this slide, you, you're gonna see there's just very little change over last year. But I again, recommend that you review it um, for yourselves. Draws off the new growth fund account for 41% of the mission budget. These monies go to the new things team to fund new worshiping commu communities and the missional incubator. I really, really encourage you all to engage the Missional Incubator Program. There is something for every church, um, a place for you to plug in. I can't speak highly enough for it. Um, there was a 9.3% increase in the New Things Team budget over 2024. And then in 2024, CDC and MCC began having joint meetings as they worked to align their work and resources more efficiently. And from those combined meetings came a desire to combine their 2025 budgets. Many of the individual grant line items have been consolidated to allow for better granting flexibility. I encourage you to take a look at that budget so you can see what I'm talking about. Um, the business office is working to create a reporting mechanism that will allow um, a report 
um, those grants to ensure continued transparency. So we're working to have that ready to launch the 2025 um, budget year. And then finally, you'll note that we listed the actions taken by General Assembly to unify their two budgets for 2025. And as we mentioned earlier, NCP is working to follow suit by moving mission staff costs into the operating budget through a calibration line in the 2025 budget. And again, I want to reiterate that doing it this way ensures there is zero per capita impact. When we talk about funding the mission budget, we really have five sources. We have unified giving, we have the NCP Resurrection Fund, the DC Resurrection Fund, and the new growth fund. Um, and then lastly, we have the mission reserves. Unified giving is separate from per capita. It is money given specifically by our churches to support the mission of the presbytery. Participation in unified giving really, really is a vital part of living into the connected nature of our presbytery. These dollars flow out into our communities through our congregations, and they connect our churches to each other through shared work. We're going to talk a little bit more about it, unified giving, in a moment, but I just cannot stress how critical a part of funding the mission budget is. Um, the unified mission giving is incredibly important. Next, you have the NCP and the DC Resurrection Funds and draws off of the interest of these funds provide a consistent layer of funding to the mission budget. Below, you can see both of the both the projected year end 2024 balance and the anticipated draws off of these funds for 2025. The new growth fund specifically funds seed money for new projects and work done with the new things team under the direction of CDC. The anticipated draw and current balance um, for the balance as of 20, the end of the year 2024 are shown here as well. Um, and I just want to make sure that I'm really clear that the new growth fund was established um, under the premise that it would be spent down. So we continue to do exactly what those funds were um, set aside to do, and that is to spend them. Lastly, uh, well, before I get to that, these all do represent normal draws from the funds. And then um, lastly, we have the mission reserves. And those reserves um, come from years prior when the entire mission budget wasn't spent. Um, the excess funds that were budgeted and not spent would go into mission reserves. And for the last few years, we have been balancing the mission budget using our reserves. As you can see, the reserves are diminishing. And while we are actively working on ways to address this, the quickest and the easiest thing that can happen would be to see an increase in our unified mission giving. On this slide, you see the trend in unified mission giving, the dollars that fund our congregational development, our transforming grants, our mission grants, our college ministry programs, our fellowships, all of that funded by unified mission giving. That giving is down 26% in 10 years. 2023, you'll note, did see um, an increase in unified giving. However, we believe that it is an anomaly. In 2023, 53 out of the 103 churches in our presbytery gave to unified mission giving. 2024 giving is more closely following the 2022 trend. And so therefore the mission budget is based on a 6% reduction in giving. And so as we wrap up the mission budget, you again have a couple of actions. Good news, they're the same ones um, that you'll be taking as it relates to the operating budget. Review the mission budget details, which are included in your packet. Come with any questions to the action item dialogue on Monday, November the 18th, ahead of the November Presbytery meeting on the 19th. And then, of course, email any questions that you might have to NCP office. They'll be happy to answer them. And then lastly, on the screen, you do see the motion that you will be asked to vote on at the November Presbytery meeting. 
As we wrap up the presentation, I want to leave you with just a few highlights. We are presenting balanced operating and mission budgets. The press rate office is is um, the press rate office move is driving the decrease in the operating budget over 2024. We have begun the work of unifying our operating and mission budgets. 41% of the mission budget is allocated to the new things team, and this comes entirely from the new growth fund. And then lastly, CDC and MCC uh, combined their budgets for 2025. I will finish by taking us back to the slide we started with. The idea that our budget is one of the things that connects us to each other. It also connects us to our past. It connects us to our future. And so as we reflect on that connection and how we are all called to participate in it, I want to add that the work being done by us as a Presbytery in our communities is in support of our mission to be missional, pastoral and prophetic so that our churches may grow. Thank you so much for your time. Look forward to engaging with you all on November 18th and then on the 19th at our Presbytery meeting.